Returnal has one of the deepest yet most confusing stories of any game to date. I stated in my review for the game that the story wasn't exactly its strong point, but after a few more hours of playing, finding new tidbits of lore, and even doing some research outside of the game, I pieced together the entire story of Returnal along with what everything means. Needless to say, once I understood what was happening, it really made me appreciate the game more and I'm hoping that once you hear what I have to say, you will also have a better understanding and appreciation for it as well. And without any further delay, let's get into it. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you. The entire game of Returnal takes place in Selene's head, and everything that she experiences is a comparison to how she is dealing with grief after going through a traumatic experience. The first ending you get in Returnal, after you defeated the final boss Ophion, is pretty cryptic. Selene wanders lower into the depths of an abyss, and she sees a car. Not being able to open it or see inside, she walks past it and discovers this giant Rick and Morty face monster that she's seen before moments after she's died. She asks it if it's the being who brought her here, then the screen goes to black, and we're met with a news scene that shows what appears to be Selene driving with her child, Helios, down a dark road late at night. For those of you who may not have been paying attention, during the scene where you play as the child, if you actually go back up to its room, the door will slam in your face and you'll see the name Helios posted on the child's bedroom door, therefore confirming that the child's name is in fact Helios. Celine changes the radio station and this momentary distraction turns into chaos when she looks up and sees an astronaut in the middle of the road. She veers to avoid him and runs the vehicle off the side of the bridge. While underwater, Celine catches a glimpse of that creepy Rick and Morty monster from earlier and quickly turns around and reaches for her child in an attempt to get them out. However, for whatever reason, whether she was pulled or swam away to save herself, she is unsuccessful in saving her child and shortly after, the credits roll. Now after this, Selene returns to Atropos like she's been doing, and if the player decides to go to the house, you will discover that the basement that has been blocked off previously can now be entered. Selene goes down there and discovers a wheelchair, which I will explain a little bit further along, mutters some dialogue, and like before, she wakes up outside of the house. Only this time, she comes to the conclusion that she wants to burn the memory of the place down. The player is then tasked with collecting six sun-faced stone fragments, one in each biome, and upon completion of this task, she places all the pieces together to create a car key. Selene is then forced to go back into the underwater abyss to fight Ophion again, and upon her success, she makes her way back to that car that was there previously. Only this time, she's able to open the door. At this point, the ending changes, and Selene is met by this creepy woman-like creature in a wheelchair, much like the one we saw in the house earlier. The creature speaks and its name turns out to be Thea, which for those who took the time to read will know that Thea was Selene's mother, who she seemed to have a pretty rocky relationship with. The scene changes yet again and the revelation is made that Selene herself was the one in the astronaut costume who caused the car crash that inadvertently caused the death of her child. The final clip goes back into the perspective of the Selene who was driving, and we see her make her way up to the surface of the water before the screen turns to black and we hear her gasp for air and say the name Helios before the game officially ends. Helios. So that's a lot of information to process without any real finite answers, so let's get into what everything means. Like I said earlier, this game relies heavily on symbolism and reading between the lines. The first thing I need to mention is that Selene's character is actually Greek-American, which is made clear in the game and some of the lore. And literally everything in Returnal has some form of Greek name or meaning. Looking into some Greek mythology, I found some interesting comparisons that shed a whole new light on the game, so here we go. To start, in Greek mythology, Selene was the goddess of the moon. Likewise, and in the mythology, her brother was Helios, the god of the sun. Selene's mother in mythology was Thea, just like she was in the game, and her father was actually Hyperion, who, for those that don't remember, was the boss Selene fought who was playing the organ like my boy Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. Then we have the five bosses of the game, who all have names for mythology as well. There's the first boss, Frike, I believe that's how you pronounce it, who is the spirit of horror. Then we have Ixion, who was basically just a really bad dude that tried to sleep with Zeus's wife, which didn't work out all that well for him. He's actually considered by many to be the father of the half-horse, half-human hybrids that we know as centaurs. Then we have Nemesis, who was the goddess of retribution and revenge. I already mentioned Hyperion, and lastly there's Ophion, who's the final boss, the titan god of the earth, and whose name translates to Serpent, which is pretty much a direct representation of the sea monster with tentacles that we got in the game. 
Oh, and we can't forget about the planet itself, Atropos, who in Greek mythology was the goddess of fate and destiny, or one of the three fates depending upon where you look it up. So with all of this information drilled into your heads, here is what officially happened. Selene at some point had a child named Helios. On that dreadful day when the car went off the side of the bridge, Helios died and Selene survived. The astronaut that caused it can be interpreted in a few different ways. Maybe it was a way to let the player know that it was Selene's fault that Helios died. On the ship you actually see that there is a rejection letter from what seemed to be an astronaut program of sorts, so maybe it was supposed to represent a failed dream and the reason that Selene seemed so out of it that night. She was feeling immense guilt, as any parent would, and judging by the pill bottles on the table in the house, she was either taking antidepressants or possibly painkillers as a means to numb the pain. There are also a couple audio logs that sound as if Celine was in some kind of therapy. All of this probably caused her to reminisce on many things in life, including the relationship she had with her mother, which from everything I've read and heard seemed very strained, maybe even abusive. All of this trauma in Celine's life is packed into her brain, and she creates the story of her as the space explorer who we play as in her head. She actually confirms this theory if you take a look at the Xenoglyph tablet at the beginning of the underwater biome. It reads, White shadow, ignorant of inevitable. This time I act without thought and reach for the lost child. My negligence is the reason I am here. Shifting black shadows are my guilt in the shape of an astronaut that became the cosmic afterbirth. So when Selene crash lands on Atropos, this is a direct reflection of the car crash where her child died. This is where her sorrow begins and why she can never escape it. You can even see the child's toy, Octo, in certain instances when you come back to the ship. The reason she cannot escape the planet is because Atropos and everything that takes place there represents the pain she's feeling and how her sorrow is something that she cannot escape. Even the clocks in the house and a certain moment of dialogue all reflect the time 8.36, which is the exact time of the accident. The argument can even be made that each of the biomes that the player explores and each of the bosses that Selene fights are direct representations of a stage of grief that she's overcoming, but that's more of my own personal theory. Nemesis, who is the third and in my experience the most difficult boss in the game, was interesting. Because after you beat it, there's this weird scene where it seems like Selene was rescued from the planet only to get sent back years later. I feel that this moment was once again showing us the player how even though Selene found peace at a certain point in her life, the pain of losing her child is always there, and it will never truly be gone unless she confronts it head on. Hyperion was another interesting boss who Selene confronts, and I actually have a theory that this represents her father. There are multiple scenes where we see Celine playing the piano, and even when she begins the fight, she asks it if it taught her the song that's being played. There's also another xenoglyph underneath this boss fight that reads as follows. This endless song, bleeding out into space, the inescapable ascent from the abyss of self and the planet, where I found Hyperion waiting upon the spire bound to an organ. I never spoke to him afterwards or heard his music again. This makes me want to believe that perhaps her father was the one playing an organ at her child's funeral, or maybe even her mother's funeral, and it seems like it was the last time they spoke. Indicating that Selene truly felt alone and abandoned, which is a direct reflection of her time spent on Atropos all alone. So there you have it. Selene was in a terrible car accident that killed her child. This and other terrible circumstances in her life caused her to create this world in her head that represents the tragedy and never-ending cycle of pain that she's experiencing. It took her traveling to the center of the world to discover what the source of this pain was and confront it head-on. It was here that she gained her freedom to finally end the cycle and break the surface. <laughs>